I still remember it like it was yesterday, walking into the Cherry Creek Mall in Colorado with my best friend, seeing that Bang & Olufsen store in the distance, going inside and completely having my mind blown. Up until that point, I had never experienced Danish design, let alone such amazing sound. And yet everything, everything we touched, we experienced, we listened to, sounded so futuristic and yet so very familiar. So to say that the Bang & Olufsen store and that experience threw gasoline on a budding audiophile fire would be an understatement. But you know what else it did? It set off a lifelong love affair with good product design. And it made such an impact that over the last 20 years, I have been fortunate enough to be a Bang & Olufsen customer. So you would think it would be easy to get their products on this channel. And yet, we have been unable to, even after a lot of begging by yours truly. So Christy and I stepped up and we did what we had to do. We bought one. So did we spend wisely? Well, sit back, relax, hit that like button and subscribe because today we are gonna find out if the Bio Sound Stage soundbar is truly worth it. Bang & Olufsen has designed several sound bar or bar-like loudspeaker systems dating as far back as the 80s and early 90s, but the Stage is their first official sound bar product. Now, Bang & Olufsen has never really been about specs. They are proof positive that it is the listening experience and the user experience that matters most. But this is a tech channel, so here's what you need to know. The Stage is a true three-channel soundbar that has 11 total drivers, each of which is powered by its own amplifier. It is a Dolby Atmos-enabled soundbar, thanks to its ARC and EARC functionality via HDMI. There is an additional HDMI connection for, say, a Blu-ray player or game console, though you need to know that that HDMI input is limited to 4K60. You can connect analog sources like a CD player or a turntable with a built-in phono preamp, but you are gonna to have to use a mini jack to RCA adapter. Now in terms of wireless or network connectivity, there's AirPlay 2, Chromecast, internet radio, BioLink, multi-room, as well as Bluetooth. Now the stage does not have a dedicated remote control, so if you want to control the stage and or customize it, you're gonna to have to use the app, or you can simply control it via the touch sensitive controls on the front. The Bio Sound Stage is hands down the most striking soundbar visually on the market right now. Its lines conjure up a lot of mid-century feels for me, and that's not surprising because when you dig into the design of the stage, you learn that it was designed by Norm Architects, which is a Danish architectural firm and not like, say, a traditional speaker designer. Its fit and finish, its materials, its construction is absolutely first rate, matched probably only by the name Musso 2. And it comes in four finishes, which range in price from $1,750 all the way up to $2,300 US. You are seeing the bronze and taupe finish in this video. Setup is easy. Simply connect the stage to your TV using the included HDMI cable, plug it into the wall, and you're off. Now online, there are people that aren't big fans of the BNO app. They say that it's buggy, that it has connection problems, and this just has not been my experience. If anything, the app has proven to be one of the more reliable apps I have ever used in conjunction with a soundbar. I actually think that the app is very inspired, and I love the way that Bang & Olufsen has gone about, well, allowing you to tailor the speaker. It uses terms that audiophiles are gonna be very familiar with while providing an education to those that may not be as familiar with audiophile lingo. For example, let's say that you're listening to your stage soundbar and you want it to be a little bit brighter, a little bit more energetic feeling. Well, simply move the slider towards the words bright or energetic. If you're a little bit more relaxed, feeling a little bit more mellow, well, move the slider towards the word mellow. It's one of these features that at first glance, you kind of look at and go, oh, that's, that's cute. But in practice, it turns out to be hugely functional. Everything that you can do within the app in terms of customization makes a notable change to the stage's sound quality. So it really does become a product that you can tailor to, well, your personal tastes. Bang & Olufsen products have a signature sound, and for most people, you're either gonna love it or you're not gonna be a fan, and the Bio Sound stage is no different. In trying to describe this sound to Christy when we first got the 
the stage, the best adjective that I could come up with was pleasing, which I know that she hates because she says the word pleasing tells, well, nothing about a product's sound. And yet, I really racked my brain and the best word that I could come up with was pleasing. The stage has a very smooth, clean demeanor. It's clearly digital, but it's good digital, not that harsh, shrill, thin crap you might be thinking about. And because of the way that BNO uses, well, DSP and their own speaker voicing, this loudspeaker sounds, well, great with a wide range of music and movie genres. Nothing about its sound is even allowed to become offensive because of the way Bang & Olufsen designs their speakers and frankly, because of how aggressive they are with their processing. To give you an idea of what I mean by this, when listening to live albums like Nirvana's Unplugged, there are moments in that mix where Kurt's microphone experiences a bit of feedback. It's, it's in the mix and through more revealing or ruthless loudspeakers, especially at higher volumes, that feedback can be very jarring, even make you sit in your listening chair and go, ooh, and I don't, I don't mind that so much because that is your reaction if you were in that space listening to that music live. Now through the stage, that, that feedback is still present, but it's just far less jarring. And that is the best way to describe the totality of the stage's sound and approach to music and movies. Everything that you need with absolutely nothing being allowed through that would otherwise spoil or disrupt your enjoyment. In other words, pleasing. Bringing it down further, be it music or movies, the bass that the stage is capable of producing, given its driver complement and relative small size, is surprising. Now, Bang & Olufsen will tell you that no subwoofer is required, but I only partially agree with this statement. Because in small to medium-sized rooms, I do, I think you can get away with the stage on its own, but in larger rooms like ours, or at higher volumes, say in excess of 85 or 90 dB, the bass is detailed, but it does run out of steam. And unfortunately, there is no way to add a subwoofer, either wired or wirelessly. And this is one of the things that I think keeps the stage from upsetting other competition from, say, the Sennheiser Ambio or the Q950T from Samsung. The mid-range is this speaker's bread and butter. It is just so refined and clear. So whether you're listening to a lyric or the spoken word, you're just not gonna have a hard time understanding what it is that you're hearing. Now, I'm not suggesting that the mid-range is forward or lean, it's, it's just right. It has a rounder tone, a rounder edge, if you will, and I won't classify this effect as warming, it's just fuller bodied. And the same is true of the high frequencies as well. Again, articulate, a little bit more fuller bodied and extended, but just not the airiest. So it does have that extension, but there's a little bit of this glassy tone that comes along for the ride versus air and decay over time and space. It's a very subtle distinction, I understand that, but it's one that you're likely going to notice if this is your first encounter with the B&O product. Dynamics are fantastic, though they fall just short of being lightning quick. Instead, the stage opts for control and composure over brute force. Now the sound stage is shocking. The best part about it is its vertical dispersion. Whether you mount the stage on a table or against your wall, sound, specifically vocals, are going to emanate from the center of your screen rather than from the bar itself. So the sound stage has amazing center fill, not to mention very good width, one that extends well beyond the boundaries of the speaker itself. And there's even a surprising amount of depth as well. With this being a three-channel soundbar, you're not gonna enjoy all of the trappings of a true surround sound system. That being said, when watching movies, the stage presents a large enough scale of sound, one that matches very well with bigger screens, and the center focus is some of the best that I have heard out of any soundbar at any price. And the sound that it does produce projects forward enough to give you a kind of surround sound-like effect. But if you're looking for that true surround sound experience, the stage is not going to upset all-in-one solutions like the Sennheiser Ambio. That said, in direct comparison to the Ambio, I did find the stage to be richer and more intelligible. Compared to other soundbars and within its limits, the stage is just absolutely fantastic and in many respects goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ambio. But if you're a bit of a bass head or are really looking for that true surround sound experience, well, the stage cannot compete 
with the Ambio or the Q950T from Samsung or even the LG. But none of those three options have the tonality, the just sheer musicality of the stage. So if you are on the market for a true all-in-one solution that sounds just brilliant with both music and movies, and maybe your space is on the smaller to medium size, well, the stage would be on my short list of soundbars to consider. Compared to the name Musso 2, both are just stunning examples of industrial design. The fit and finish of both products is absolutely premium, and I do think that they are going to appeal to the same type of customer. The name is far more of a music system replacement that manages to moonlight as a soundbar than, say, the stage, which is definitely a music and movie loudspeaker. You do get more for your money with the name in terms of features and functionality, but I have to admit I prefer the tonality and musicality and, well, just scale that the stage is capable of producing. So the only question that remains is this. Are we keeping it? No. But not for the reasons you may be thinking, because in terms of sound quality, I absolutely love it. But the finish, more specifically, the white bass, I just cannot get past it. I know it's a ticky-tack sort of thing, but at this price point, I just need to make sure that I'm 1000% satisfied with my purchase. So this unit is going back, and I'm going to take a moment to think about which finish is going to work best for me in the long term. But do I think the stage is worth it for you? To the right discerning listener, absolutely I do. It has an intangible quality about it that I just have a really hard time trying to explain, but maybe I don't have to. Because at the end of the day, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. And in this instance, we're talking about my system. And I absolutely love the stage. So that's it. That is my review of the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound Stage. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. What hi-fi brand do you think has the best industrial design? Sound off down in the comments below. And I would just, I would like to apologize real quick for any and all sound that may have creeped into the mix here. They are building a house, Google's digging fiber lines, and it has just been a nightmare trying to record these videos around all of these distractions. So I apologize if some of that stuff got into the mix. Obviously we wanna do the best job that we can, but we're doing the best we can with what we got, so. Apologies if any of that creeped in there. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you continue to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both Christy and I thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that is it. This review is done, so remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs> Moving on, either, huh? Either of those. The first or the third? Yeah. Not the second one, though. No no swords. No, that was terrible. No swords. And we're a bit. <laughs> we're, I mean, if you go by some of the comments, we're barely even... We're not even a tech channel. We're barely even a channel. Well, <laughs> according... What was that guy's name? Skeezix, it's 97. <laughs> yeah. According to one guy. According to one guy according with his two guy, friends. One of the, one, <laughs> well, according to one guy who has two, two total friends, yeah. you are the worst reviewer. I am the worst reviewer. On YouTube. I am. Sure, sure, I can take a shower and set up a light, but I am the worst <laughs> YouTuber reviewer ever. Ever. Oh, but there was, and then there was the other guy. There was the other guy that basically said, "That's all. That's all you could do. That's all I could do. You could. You I could set up ambient, ambient light, light. Which what's funny? I'm like, how do you set up ambient? Yeah, light? Yeah, ambient's already set up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I can control the light. <laughs> all right.